So Shivji's jata, Shivji's locks are holding the Ganges. So Ganges is actually property of Vishnu and is property of Shiva. It's a personal property of Shiva and Vishnu. Ya mausme kiza me bhi fasle bahar hai. Mausme kiza, season of fall. Although in this whole world, the season is of fall. Fall means dryness. What happens in fall? Trees are getting dried up, leaves are getting dried up, they are all falling down and a point comes when tree is just standing naked, not even a single leaf on it. That's why it's called the time of fall. Saram is saying the whole world is living in the season of fall. Everything is falling. Akkal, buddhi, dimag, dil, sab kuch. Intellect is falling, mind is falling, senses are falling. When everything and your hairs are falling and your teeth are falling. That is fall of the body. The season of spring is the youth. And once the youth is gone, it is time of fall. Until the time comes, the body totally falls. No life. So in the world, it is season of fall. But here where I am, says Swami Ram, it is time of spring. And what a spring is there. Definitely, it has nothing to do with the external scenario. It has everything, everything to do with the mind of Swami Ram. The spring is not outside, the spring is in the mind of Ram. The game and the dance of the sunlight is not happening on the Ganges surface, it is happening in the mind surface of Ram. So Swami Ram is actually just celebrating what he is experiencing and he has put down so nicely it's a very long poetry. I have just sung few uh, paras out of it. And he is saying so beautifully, Aadekh le bahar ke kaisi bahar hai. Come and see what a spring has come. What a beauty is happening. When people are complaining, there is so much misery in the world, there is so much suffering and diseases in the world, the Swami is saying there is so much beauty in the world. There is so much of delectable beauty. It's a tasty lutfudar. It's a lutfudar. It's a delectable. It's a very tasty beauty around us. But this beauty can be only experienced when mind is clear. When mind is not infested with diseases. No guilt, no shame, no inferiority, no superiority, no vasanas, no pulls towards the world. Nothing is tugging onto the heart, nothing is bothering the mind. Such a person is filled with so much contentment. Now this person if given uh, a chance to live in a palace, would be in a palace, won't be, re you know, not be rejoicing too much or too excited about it. Put this person in a small humble cottage, will be very happy even there. Why? Because your happiness is coming from within, not from outside. If your mind is not clear, if your mind is not healthy, should I say, people have very sick mind. They'll hold on to grudges, they'll hold on to pains, they'll hold on to 
their failures, their hold down to others' success and be jealous of that. They are always competing, they are always comparing, always doing that. And unable to see the fickleness of the world, unable to see what is important. What is important? Once we understand this, what is important, then our mind should be totally focused on that. And those who are unable to do it, they live a very mundane life. Now, you can choose to live a mundane and it's your choice. It's okay to choose mundane also. But when you have an opportunity to have an extraordinary life filled with intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, peace, gratitude, celebrations, then why not have that? A lady came to me, she was very broken, shattered, why her 26-year-old marriage just broke? Husband took fancy on some younger girl and one fine day he comes and, and that girl was of the same age of his own elder daughter. So he chooses that girl and, and says, okay, we are done. Um, I don't want to continue the marriage. And then they had a bitter fight. He took away everything. She went to court. Case is running, you know, in the Indian courts, you never know. How much time would they take to give the final judgment? So she was very unhappy and very sad. So I, I heard her whole story, you know. I don't even get paid to do that. I should be. A psychiatrist is paid. You know, one fine day somebody said that um, usually I do come out for Aarti in the evening and I, I, that day I, I was not out. So the phone came from office, are you coming out? I said, maybe I'm not coming. Why? This is somebody has come and they have some trouble in their family and they were very desperate to meet you and, and I said, but why should I come and listen to their crap? They are stuck with their attachments, they are stuck with their relationship issues. How can I advise them? I have never lived these relationships in my this present life. So how can I advise them? No, 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 they are saying we'll just have darshan and we'll go away. I said, okay. I came out. So they sat with me and they started pouring their stuff out. You know, I really felt like giving them paper bag for the vomits. You know, there's a paper bag for the vomit in the craft, in the plane you do get it, but there is no paper bag for your mind vomit. So I am getting bored with all that. So I just heard for uh, maybe two minutes or three minutes and I said, wait, please wait. You don't want to live with him? He's bad? She said, yes. I said, okay, you get out. I have a lawyer outside. You sign up the papers. You can sign it up. Done. And they were saying, what? <laughs> I said, but that's what you are saying. You don't want to be with him. You are very fine adults, intelligent people. If you are choosing that, then why are you haggling? Well, they did quick pranam, went out. They are still together. Sometimes, you know, I am getting these 
erratic, frantic males and they are writing the old story, you know, what they are living. I give one, one line reply, do as you like. Why ask me? No, you tell me, you tell me, what do we do? No, you tell me, you tell me. And when you were married, you asked me. I saw your letter. Did I give you any astral consult before marriage? You did it on your own now. If there is an issue, please solve it on your own. Don't ask me. 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 Don't how they have changed, how there is no love, how you, what you desire you are not getting. But why should I be bothered about that? And I am not getting paid even to listen. It's because see, for so many years, I had been doing very patient listening, giving them advice, and then I see that they don't change and they still do what they had thought to do. I had decided something. In their mind, they won't say it, they'll ask me what to do. And I'm taking compassion and giving them advice, okay, you might do this or this or this. And sometimes, you know, I'm a very uh, passionate person. And, oh, how come? How dare? This, that, this, that. You know, give them all the tools to sort out their problems. But I have seen this, people love their pains. People love their sufferings. Have you seen a stray dog who is having a bad skin itch and he's itching and he's, he's going to just, you know, use his teeth and claws to scratch it and the blood comes out. He's bleeding but he'll still scratch. And if you try to help the dog to put some ointment, he'll bark at you. He might bite you. So it becomes dangerous to help a stray dog. And you can't even throw the ointment. Put it on your own. <laughs> they can't do that. So a mind which is unable to help itself, it will be difficult for anybody to help this mind. But only when the mind decides I have to help myself, then the external given help will be taken and used also. Now, coming to question about that if sleep comes over, when the mind is relaxed, what to do? Take a bath, cold shower bath. If you have a pond or a river, go and take a dip in that. I know of many sadhus who used to do these kind of things also. Mm. They have taken sannyas, there is a, he is a sadhu. And he's finding that, you know, sleep is taking over every time when he sits for dhyan or sadhana. What to do? So in December, Jan, February, Ganga water is so icy cold, they would take a dip over there. It worked for some time, but you know, our body has a habit of adjusting with everything. Then after the time, you know, still, then he used another method. He would take the dip with his clothes on and would not change to dry clothes, see? Would sit with those wet clothes and do his sadhana. Nobody taught him to do that. He chose to do this on his own. Some people put some, uh, I am recalling one woman 
sadhu. So in her younger days, when it is sweltering hot, she would go up on her rooftop and sit on those iron sheets to do her sadhana. She passed away two years ago at age, I think, so 96 or so. We had very good, you know, relationship. She loved me a lot and respected me a lot. When I was young, 17, 18, she met me at age, that age. 